how's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Followed from 2018. Uh, to be fair, this did hit the festival circuits uh, for a while before it was released uh, wide on streaming, so you'll get some people saying 2019 or 2020. IMBD says 2018 though, so I'll go with that. Uh, anyway, this is directed by Antony Lee, uh, stars Matthew Solomon, John Savage, Tim Dreyer, Sam Valentine, and Kelsey Griswold. Griswold. <laughs> Probably only her uh, second or third worst vacation, right? Uh, but anyway, I didn't know too terribly much about this. I found it. It looked interesting. I think this might have been a Dollar Tree pull. Uh, but found footage film takes place on Halloween weekend. And it's um, a haunted hotel. Some interesting stuff going in there. So I figured... Let's go ahead and watch it and check it out. And overall, this movie is, is fun. It's kind of a good popcorn horror movie. Some cheesy stuff happens. And, you know, it, it's a totally enjoyable watch. It has some interesting ideas that I do wish were pushed farther. And it's not super scary. But I think what it does well, it does well enough. I just... I wish it was scarier, and I wish it worked on its themes better, but for what it is, it's okay. Again, more a fun popcorn movie than anything super big or memorable, but overall, I had a fun time with it. As far as the scares go, it kind of, you know, does this thing where it starts out before the scary part, and the scares are at like a two, right? And then once it gets scary, it jumps to like a six and pretty much stays there. I do wish we had more of an incline. I wish the scares ramped up, got scarier and scarier and scarier, and it just got big and crazy. As it stands, though, there's actually a pretty low body count in this movie, and I wish this movie was a little tougher, had a little more teeth. Um, I wish it was... Yeah, just a little bit harder of a horror movie than it is, you know? It, it's it's okay. I just wish, you know, <laughs> I just wish it was scarier. And also with the themes, you get this idea that the main character, Drop the Mic, is an influencer. And you start off where he's kind of annoying. He's a little bit funny, but he starts off pretty annoying. And but in a believable way, you know? Like, I've seen lots of YouTubers like this, but as things get scary, you see that this is his persona, and you see his mask start to slip a little bit when you see him get legitimately terrified. And I do think that's interesting as well. And then you get nice moments like character beats, like at one point he comforts his editor, and you're like, okay... You know, there there is a more human side to this guy. I wish, though, that it was a little more complex. Like I said, seeing the mask slip off was a lot more than I thought we'd get, and it is an interesting, uh, an interesting character, but most of the time in this movie, his constant ethical decision is, should I take my crew and just leave? And I wish it was more to it than that. Give him some other things that let him choose whether or not he wants to be a scumbag other than just the reoccurring choice of should I leave now? So it's good, but I wish it was more. Like, at one point, he talks about why he likes horror, and it's just the one scene. But, you know, being a horror YouTuber, I really wish we got to dig into this more than just the one scene. So it's good. I The slipping of the mask, again, more than I expected, I just wish it was, you know, even more of an analysis. And same with the hotel and its history. The hotel has a good bit of history. It's modeled after the Cecil Hotel, and they even have their own version of Eliza Lamb in here, which I thought was 
really interesting because, you know, the Cecil is interesting. You know, uh, a serial killer staying at it at one point. You know, and I like all the stories. I like the sense of lore and I like it being lived in. And then seeing some of these ghosts. It, it's a pretty good idea. But at the same time, a ghost pops up and the camera gets all shaky and later they say, I think it was the ghost of that serial killer. I wish that was a little more clear. I wish the ghost had more of a sense of their own identity in order to tie them into their stories better. I mean, look at The Shining. A lot of those ghosts in The Shining, you didn't really know their origin story, but they were so iconic and we got a good look at them and they had a cool design. And you get, again, the beginning of that here. You get where it could have been something really cool. It is on the precipice. I just wish we got a better look. We had more of an idea of their stories and we could say, it's that one ghost, one of those mini iconic ghosts, you know? So the history is there. It's again, you know, the scares, the influencer thing and the hotel history, all good elements that are played out well enough. I just wish they were a little bit more. As it stands, though, it is a fun enough movie, a found footage Halloween kind of popcorn horror movie. If you guys like Grave Encounters, it doesn't get to the Grave Encounters point, but I can see some similarities there. So overall, it's a good horror movie. I had fun with it, but definitely not the best thing ever. Uh, anyway, let's talk a bit about the plot. In order to analyze this further and dig in a little deeper, I won't talk about the end, so no major spoilers, but let's dive in. Uh, we open up on a computer screen. Now, there is a, a bit of mystery there. Who is using this computer? What's going on? We get a bit of opening text saying that there were these videos online and then one more that was quickly deleted and it surfaces every so often and the guy doing the computer is going to post it. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's a cool setup. At the same time, though, a few things, you know, like he has his uh, his external hard drive he's taking the video off of and it takes him like 30 minutes or so to get the video off of that. And then he goes to to post it again. Right. But you think, OK, that's the ending chunk of the video. But then it rolls into like the next two parts, which look like they were already up, which was kind of strange. It's a interesting way to divide it into chapters, but it's not a hundred percent logical. So let's not think too hard about it. Uh, but anyway, a lot of the movie is going to be the YouTube clips of this guy drop the mic. And as I said, drop the mic does come on pretty strong at the beginning. I'm always a little hesitant for movies about influencers just because they can be so campy. But he does it in an authentic way. It doesn't feel phony. It feels like a real influencer you might see. So props to that. And basically, he has to get 50,000 subscribers by Halloween night. If he does that, his sponsor will award him $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars. You can't say no to that. You have to go do some publicity stunt to try to get subscribers. Now, that being said, I always feel that these big personality YouTubers always have a ton of subscribers already. If 50,000, it's kind of low. I would expect it to be the million mark or something, but, but whatever. Uh, he has a cinematographer who's kind of superstitious, so he hires this girl to help him on the crew that he knows his cinematographer has a crush on. And then he has like a cranky editor, and they're going to put her in her own room, and she's going to be like live editing and posting these stuff as soon as possible. Which, okay, again, I don't want to get bogged down by technicalities, but a YouTube video does its, you know, like a big new one. A lot of it's like the first 48 hours that it does most of its performance, which isn't that long a time. But when your deadline is supposed to be like the end of Halloween weekend, 
that is 48 hours. So everything you do, like, a lot of its influence will be after the deadline. I, again, overanalyzing it, yeah, sure. And also, it's like, they say that they're live, but they're also posting? Again, try not to overanalyze it. I don't know. But whatever. They're getting these videos out quickly, and they give the editor free reign, so that allows for some of the wackiness that you wouldn't think would slip through uh, to slip through. Although, one more thing, and I do want to say, they always give these stereotypes of the cranky editor. I don't know. On my short films, the editor was always a really nice, happy-go-lucky person that if you asked them about their their uh, edit, they would show you like a big, long 23-layer audio mix. So I, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, they go out there and they don't have permission to film, so they're kind of sneaking around and filming stuff. Again, you would think that the hotel would notice if you're live streaming, but whatever. Um, they go and they investigate. There's some spooky sequences. Things happen in the hallways in their room. And, of course, the question, do we leave, do we not leave, and the guy trying to, to push it. And overall, like I said with the scary sequences earlier, is there fun? There's this thing with the elevator ritual that kind of marks when the movie kicks off. And I do like that idea that, uh, you know, there's all these rituals on the internet. Don't play the elevator game at 3 a.m. and stuff like that. And it did kind of incorporate really well into the movie. And it is a pretty fun sequence. And there are several fun sequences. Again, though, I just wish this movie had more teeth. I wish it was scarier and felt more dangerous. But there are fun ghosts and fun sequences, and when it gets going, it stays pretty consistent. Although I will say, the humor drops down a bit, because the humor going at the beginning was a good bit of levity. I wish we could have kept some jokes and sarcasm a little bit more towards the end, because it did get kind of dark, and then when a humorous element is introduced at the end again, you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of jarring now, isn't it? Um, so overall... It's fun. It's not the best thing ever, but it is definitely a fun watch. Running around the hotel with your friends, looking for ghosts, and some fun little sequences here and there. Not the best thing ever, but I enjoyed it enough, enough to recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Halloween playlist. If you want to see me talk about other Halloween horror movies, like Halloween or another found footage one, Houses October Built, you can find those here. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.